In our game today, Bobby Fischer ignores his king safety. He plays chess basically like Mikhail Tall, and I have to say this is one of his wildest and most complicated games, really, that I have ever seen from him. It was played in 1961. His opponent was Samuel Brzezewski, really the player that would have been the best American player had it not been for Fischer, really a top, top grandmaster. And this was a match they played. This was in New York. And uh, Fischer has the white pieces. Ryshevsky has black. Let us jump right in. Fischer begins with e4. Ryshevsky plays c5. Knight f3, knight c6. And we quickly have an open Sicilian on the board. And Samuel Ryshevsky plays g6, or the accelerated dragon, which invites <clears throat> this Maroxy bind idea with c4, which we've seen quite a bit. But Fischer does not do that. He plays with his pieces. He gets his knight to c3. Bishop to g7, obviously attacking the knight at d4 twice. Bishop to e3, defending it the second time. And knight to f f6. And one of the ideas behind the accelerated dragon for black is that he wants to play d7, d5 in one move. He doesn't want to play d6 first. He wants to play d5 in one go. And that's one of the reasons the most popular move for white here is bishop to c4, to control that, that d5 square. But Fisher plays bishop to e2. Uh, what does he have up his sleeve? This is a different idea. Black can play d5 here. It's, it's okay. But Ryshevsky wanted to castle first. And Fischer plays f4. If he just castles here, then after d5, this is a totally equal uh, position. Um, so f4 is played by Fischer. And he's playing something called the Alekins or Ayekin uh, attack. And this is a an incredibly wild opening from white. Basically, he delays his king, his castling, his king safety, and he just launches his king side pawns right at the black position, devil may care, just sort of going for mate right out of the opening. Uh, d6 is played now. If he plays d5 now, then e5, gaining space can be played because that f pawn now supports it. So he plays d6. Uh, knight to b3 is played, avoiding peace exchanges. Uh, and here, a couple of strong ideas for black, just so you know. a5, with the idea of playing a4 and irritating that knight at b3. And computers actually like the move e5 here. And if white takes, knight takes. And the black, black has a, a decent position here. Um, but Ryshevsky is thinking about playing d5. So he plays bishop to e6 to support that uh, d5 push. And now g4. Remember, I told you this was wild. With the king still on e1, he's advanced all of these pawns going after the black position in this ultra-aggressive system that he is playing. Uh, a good response is rook to c8. That looks like the strongest move in this position these days. After a move like f5, bishop to d7, uh, black is okay. And if white gets really aggressive with g5, black has this strong idea. He can actually just take on e4, and after knight e4, bishop f5, and even though he's given up a piece for two pawns, black is, is better here. He has a much safer king, very well-placed pieces. His central pawn structure is, is healthy and strong. So black is actually doing fairly well there. Uh, but Ryshevsky plays d5. He, that's what he was aiming for, as we know. And Fischer plays f5, hitting that bishop at e6. The bishop uh, could retreat to d7. That's perfectly good. And after ed5, knight e5 h3, pawn takes a queen d2, e6, long castle, just a, a sample line. Um, white is uh, still a bit better here, but black has a, you know, a playable position. His pieces are centralized and well-placed, but Ryshevsky plays the bishop back to c8 because he doesn't want to block his queen's defense uh, of that d-pawn. So Fischer takes on d5, and now knight to b4. So there are three pieces attacking the pawn at uh, d5. And Alekin's idea was actually d6. And everybody thought at the time that black could, had to play queen d6 because ed6 was seen uh, as, a, as a blunder for, for black. The problem, the, the concern was that white would play this move g5. And this was thought to be winning for white. Modern computers show us that, in fact, the opposite is true. It is winning for black. After rook to e8, again, a sample line taking the knight, rook takes e3, taking the bishop, you get that second piece, but now queen to h4 check is very strong. And after, say, king to d2, queen to g5, setting up a discovery here, so the king moves back, then bishop takes f5, 
And if queen to d2, just queen to g2, counterattacking the rook at h1, and uh, black is in a very strong position. If white were to take on, on e3, the knight to c2 check forks the king and the queen. So that may be something you can surprise your opponents with if you play this line. Uh, but white goes ahead and just plays bishop to f3. Fisher doesn't enter that line. He, over, he protects d5 a third time. Uh, black takes on f5, a3, kicking the knight away. Ryshevsky ignores that for the time being and goes ahead and takes on g4, which threatens the bishop at f3. Fisher just tucks that away at g2. Now the knight does move to a6. Queen to d3. Obviously what Fisher is doing is clearing the way to castle long and attack on the king's side. The queen at d3 also keeps black's bishop from settling in on f5. Black would love to just play bishop f5, g6. He'd probably just be winning then, so he has to keep that bishop out of the f5 square. e6 is played uh, by uh, Ryshevsky. He would love, it. getting queens off is sort of his dream if you take black is at least already equal in this position. So Fisher ignores that. Castle's long. Knight takes d5. It looks like black's generating some pressure against this c3 knight, but it's uh, not that clear. Fisher ignores that for the time being and just plays h3. If he takes on d5, uh, this isn't quite as good for white as the game, although he's probably still better. Um, but he plays h3. Obviously, what he wants to do is get this pawn out of the way so that he can attack down the h and the g files. Um, black cannot take the knight because queen takes d8, obviously. And if the bishop takes, then hg4, he can ignore the bishop because he's threatening mate on h7. And again, white would just be winning there. So what Ryshevsky does is he plays g3 to block things up. He allows white's h-pawn to block his rook. And then he tries to use his own g-pawn to block the g-file. So rook h to g1. Fisher, obviously, he wants, to, he wants to move the bishop on g2 out of the way and then just take that pawn with his rook. Uh, Ryshevsky plays queen to d6 to defend that pawn. Um, if bishop takes c3, then pawn takes queen to h4, take on d5, ed5, then king to b2. And basically, Fisher just plays bishop to f2 because there's a pin grabs on g3 and uh, has a dominating position. So queen to d6 holds on to that g-pawn. Now bishop takes d5. He eliminates this central knight and also unblocks his rook, which now is putting more pressure on the g3 pawn. Ed5, and now knight d5. That's a, obviously a strong centralized knight, but he also, that knight supports the f4 square. So Fisher can play bishop to f4, and then rook takes g3. And so that attack is beginning to really develop here. King to h8, bishop f4, queen to g6, offering the exchange of queens. And here Fisher makes an imprecise move. He plays the move queen to d2. More accurate, as it turns out, is queen to e2. Because in that case, after bishop takes h3, rook g3, uh, the rook and the queen both control the g4 square. And we'll see in a second why that matters. Um, queen to d2, and now bishop h3, rook takes g3, and Ryshevsky is able to play bishop to g4. And what he wants to do here is play maybe h5 or f5 and use that g4 bishop to block the g file. So Fisher has, has to sort of start over to find a way through on that file. Rook to h1, rook f to e8. Ryshevsky is threatening rook to e2, and uh, that rook and the queen would then be attacking c2. So to stop that, Fisher plays knight to e3, blocking the rook, but also attacking the bishop on g4. And uh, here, the best move for black, maybe rook a to d8, gaining a tempo on the queen. But Ryshevsky plays queen to e4, which is a double attack. It attacks the bishop at f4, as well as the rook at, uh, at h1. Uh, but Fisher's seen a little bit deeper. He ignores the attack on his bishop and plays queen to h2. Obviously, if black were to take the bishop now, queen h7 would be checkmate. So that bishop is indirectly defended. Um, Bishop to f5, a very interesting variation. Rook takes bishop, king takes, then knight takes f5, queen f5, and now this very powerful move would have been, play, would have been played by Fisher. Knight to d4. You'll notice Fisher's threatening mate on h7, except for this queen that is defending that square. So if Fisher can take away all of the squares on this diagonal, then the queen can't defend h7. So it only has two squares after knight to d4. If it goes to g6, though, rook to g1, and it's pinned. 
And if it goes to e4, then queen to h6 check, king g8, rook to g1 check, and the queen would have to block, and it would still be lost. So instead of that, Ryshevsky plays the bishop to e6 instead, but he still has the same problems. And Fisher begins with an exchange sacrifice. Rook takes g7, king takes g7, queen to h6 check, king to g8, and now rook to g1 check. And the queen has to block. If he moves the king, Fisher plays queen to g7 mate. So he has to play queen to g6, and the rook takes, and the pawn takes. So in this position, Fisher has a, a queen and a knight in exchange for two rooks and a pawn. Now, if you're just doing simple point counting, that's only like a pawn's worth of difference. However, Fisher's king is much safer, and his pieces are much better coordinated and much more active. And that's really where his edge comes from. First, if he plays knight to d4, centralizing the knight, putting some pressure on the bishop at e6, rook a to d8, threatens that knight. But now bishop to e5, not only does it def defend the knight, but it threatens queen to g7 checkmate. Krzyzewski plays rook to d7 to defend against that mate. But now knight takes bishop, rook takes, and knight to g4. A powerful idea threatening knight to f6, which would fork the king and the rook at d7. So black plays rook to f7 to control the f6 square, but then queen to g5. This is the threat. Queen to d8 check. Rook to f8 would be forced. Then knight to h6 is checkmate. So that's a very serious threat from Fisher after queen to g5. Krzyzewski plays rook to f1 check, king to d2, now h5. So the king has some room to maneuver to go to h7, but it doesn't really matter. And after queen to d8 check, Krzyzewski resigned. Let's look and see why. Obviously, king to h7 loses immediately to queen to h8 mate. Um, if rook to f8 here, knight to h6 check is not mate, but after king h7, queen takes rook, Rook takes bishop at e5. A two-move combination uh, wins everything here. Queen to g8 check. King takes knight. Then queen to h8 check. Double attacking the king and the rook. And when the queen go king goes to g5, queen takes with check. Whew. A wild game from Bobby Fischer against one of his great rivals, Samuel Ryshevsky. I hope you enjoyed the game. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.